All right, YouTube says we're live. So, <coughs> welcome, folks, to a hot, dry season with designer Pat Mullen. We are. Are, are we? Pick are up. we live? YouTube? Are yeah, we live? I think we're live? Yep, we're live. John Longshore has arrived. John Longshore is here. The party can begin. All right, let me. No, I don't so, want to mute it. So, remind me what the exclamation point is. What's that status called? Disrupted. Disrupted. Okay, so we have disrupted guys back here. Right. And we'll try and dislodge those guys from that bunker at some point. This, um, yeah, this turn we'll get to walk through a, a lot of the command phase functions, which the first turn just don't matter in uh -huh. this scenario. So don't make me yawn, Gary. Oh, oh boy. No, no. So, all right. So we are at the beginning of game turn two. Hello, everybody out there in YouTube land. So I'll tell you. Um, Panza is here to moderate and he is moderating the chat and he's also collating questions. So if you guys have any questions about anything, the gameplay, the history, whatever, just go ahead and post it in the chat and we'll take a pause every now and then and answer some questions and then move forward and play. So here we go. So, all right, we're at the beginning of the command phase, Gary. Mm -hmm. So we go to the sequence of play Yep. and it starts with an aviation step. And here it's pretty simple for you. So let's look at your aviation card where all your guys are hiding. They're all mm -hmm. available. They're all yep. ready to go. And that's fine. So you really don't have anything to do here. And uh, what, what normally happens is anybody who was hurt, you could move them to repairing. So right. you couldn't use them this turn. Um, anybody who was aborted gets moved into ready on that chart. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, you could uh, decide what to do with your OV-1C Mohawk. And it's also a time to reset your air point track to maximum level and stuff. So let's see if that's done. Yep, you got five air points. And okay. uh, there, you don't have any B-52. So that's cool. Right. So then we go to the reinforcement step, and we have none. None. The, at this time, you also can check for mic force availability if we're playing mm -hmm. a scenario that has that in play, but we're not. But I do gather my available concealment markers now from that game turn track. And I put them in my pocket. There's three of them. I'm just going to plop them on the map right now. And then I'm going to put them in my little cubby hole. My hidey hole for NLF stuff. And I'll be placing those later. So then we go to the... Uh, we, may, we would place reinforcements. And I could place them concealed if I desired. But we're not doing that. And then there's a replacement step. Same thing, mm -hmm. but we're not doing that. Now we come to what matters. We right. come to the, re the reorganization step. Mm -hmm. So at this time, remove disrupted units, marker, disrupted markers from units eligible for automatic removal. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's, t let's take a look at that. That's on the ground unit status chart. Okay. okay. So it actually is not on the ground. That just tells you what to do with the boy, boy, mm -hmm. come on, wake, wake up, Pat. So it's pretty simple. You can undisrupt anybody, the U S player mm -hmm. or the NLF player who is within three hexes of an HHC or a headquarters. Okay. If you're not adjacent to the enemy and there's no role, no role. It's just automatic. Okay. So we have one disrupted guy. Right. We will remove that disrupted status. Right. Because he's within three hexes of that HHC that I can't. See. Yep. Correct. And um, I don't have anybody disrupted. Um, and that's that's pretty much how disruption works. There's some other stuff we'll deal with maybe in other live plays, but there's some units that can self-undisrupt. Mm -hmm. And that's special forces. And that is uh, NLF local force. And another thing is you don't you don't have a unit that's capable of it in this scenario, but um, a brigade or divisional headquarters for you mm -hmm. or my divisional headquarters. Remember, I had that intelligence mission that I did right. where I unfi unfix some guys. Instead of doing that, I can decide to make a command check, a CR check, and if I'm successful, I can disrupt half of my CR anywhere on the map as uh -huh. long as they're not adjacent. Okay. Okay, so, all right, enough of that exposition. Now we go back to sequence of play. They go to the initiative step. I 
for the second turn, we look at the game turn track. I am now the initiative player because you were last time. Okay. So there's so no I roll. Just, we actually switch back and forth. Right. Okay. Normal. So so most of the time it's set in the scenarios and in the campaign it's determined by a thing called the intensity level. Right. So uh, right and it'll switch hands as both Cosvin and MacV decide to reinforce the operation. And this it's simple. It's U.S. first and a left second. Okay. Like basically you're reinforcing with a bunch of stuff the right. first turn. So you gain the initiative and then we, we react and then you follow through and you got the third one. So let me figure out, and I figure out who goes first in the fires phase of the operations phase. And I think we will go. Uh, I think we're going to go first in the fires and first in operation. Okay. First in both. Okay. So now, after doing that in the initiative step, you see it says, um, I could transit box movement for the NLF. That's in the campaign. Mm -hmm. There's some red haze. That's, that's if available, not available in the scenario. But now comes the important part. We determine fixed or unfixed units for both sides. Okay. So it, and it doesn't. There's no order to do it. Both players, you know, can just do it. So, mm -hmm. what this is is anybody for you right now. It's anybody who's not adjacent to me, and the same for me. I anybody I have guy, that's not adjacent to you. I got another disrupted guy that I want to remove that status from. Uh, which where is he? Under the HHC. Okay. Ah, yeah, th yeah. Easily done. He's okay. within three hexes of HEC, not adjacent. So anybody that's not adjacent at this time becomes unfixed? Correct. There's some caveats to that, too. Um, so, like, U.S. units automatically become fixed if they enter a village. So mm -hmm. if they're in a village, they can't become unfixed. Right. You know, stuff like that. But it's... Right now in our scenario, it's pretty simple. Okay. All right. So every, everybody's supposed to be unfixed is unfixed. All right. So now we go to the first ISR phase. We start with the concealment step. So I have those three concealment markers that I'm going to throw out there. And I'm going to start concealing some guys. And. We're going to conceal these NVA here. That used to, they, they became unfixed, actually. And now they're concealable. The bunkers, bunkers in the game, once they've been fixed, uh -huh. you know, they can't be un, like, reconcealed or unfit. You know, it's a static. Okay. But they static. can be concealed? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so at the beginning of the game, like we're playing here and we had bumped into each other and mm -hmm. all, all those bunkers and everything had revealed themselves, but normally they can be concealed in a concealment marker. Now they can't move. Right. Right. You, you know, so for instance, in the campaign, there's, um, something around the neighborhood of like 12, 13, 14 bunkers and they're just placed and they can be concealed okay. or left unfixed. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a, just a thing. So let's see here. Those guys go into seven. And I have a bunch more. So another thing is, if I was going to place a dummy, placing mm -hmm. concealment markers, I can only place them within, let me, since I'm placing these new guys, let me just... I don't want to confuse him with anybody else. I hit the move marker. You can only place a concealment marker in a place where there are NLF units or another concealment marker. Okay. So it prevents me from doing gamey stuff like dropping one there. Right. You know? yeah. Right, right. So it's kind of like it's – so they're placed in an area where there's an NLF presence. So let's see. We're going to throw that guy there. We're also going to throw that guy there. And I think we're going to throw this guy here. So 
So this is like, and happens a lot of games where you see, you know, sometimes hidden movement Mm -hmm. is a big deal, right? But here, you know who these guys are. Mm -hmm. You've got a pretty good idea, you know, of, of, of who's going where right now. So, so this is when concealment just becomes a status, a thing the U.S. has to work its way through. And then I can play shell games, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so that's it. We finished the concealment phase. Now we go to your aviation. Okay, U.S. aviation may move. So correct me if I'm wrong, but these guys are the recon choppers, right? And... I dropped him right in the middle of stuff on the map. In the middle of stuff? That is not a recon chopper. That no. is a Huey. That is standard aviation. Okay. It's got a little so, O. Oh, those are the... Uh, okay. All right. So there's two of those. Observation. All right. So we'll put one here. And I think we're going to put one here. Here. And that sounds better. Yeah, yeah. Load and unloading missions may do I have anything down here that needs to be transported I do uh, so the Hueys can transport a full unit full infantry full infantry okay only the Chinooks can transport artillery which we screwed up last time okay so S- some guy in the comments section like you know calling us out So we're flying uh, a couple guys down here to FSB Dao Tiang. Right, loading them up. The right hex, yeah, okay. And uh, they are then loading. Right. Uh, so that is the aviation step. Okay, so you've you finished your movement. Okay, yes. so now, now I get an opportunity to do ADF if I so desire. And I think I do. So... A dude pops out of a concealment marker, reveals himself. Hello, world! And he's going to take a shot at your um, observation chop. Okay. So we go to the ADF resolution. Mm hmm. And I'm on the four. And it looks like I have. I'm just the 394 unit. That's the only bonus we're getting here. Mm-hmm. Do you have? Do you don't have any gunship? Where'd you move your gunship, Gary? Uh, they're still at the base. Okay. So, all right. So they're not there for ride and escort. So I just get a plus one on this roll on the four chart. Two to five. Let's see what happens. Roll the six, seven, no effect. Uh, uh, I really want to take some choppers out. So he's done that. And I think that's all we're going to do for ADF now. Now you may load or unload. So go okay. ahead and load those guys up and give them a mission. They're already done. Um, let's see. All right. Now they are missioned. Right. They are missioned. All right. So that's the end of your aviation step. Now we go to the intelligence step. So you've got one intelligence unit. It's ASA dead on top of the map. Mm-hmm. And you can pick any concealment marker on mm-hmm. the map and guess PLAF or PAVN. Okay, concealment marker number three, PLAF. Let's see what's inside concealment marker three. What's behind door number three? It is indeed PLAF. Now you get to roll your command rating on modified. Which is six. Yep. Under. All right. So that's wondrous news for you. <coughs> they were revealed and they're fixed. If there was a headquarters there, if you look at the uh, ISR and command. Uh huh. Yeah. Then it reveals adjacent stuff as well. Yeah. 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 You get, and for mine, I am going to try to unfix. The guys in 3214 with the 9th PLAF Division Headquarters. And I have a CR of 6, but you're in Jungle Hills. 
This is going to make this a tough roll. Do I even want to do it? Minus four. Woof. Woof. Hard for the radio detection finders to get through all that interference. Maybe. Now nah, we're going to go for it. So it's okay. a two or less. Here we go. Failed. Nope. And now we go to the surveillance step. So your choppers can try to reveal concealment All markers right. and whatnot. So. All right. So, so you still, uh, under that 394, you still have concealment markers. Correct. So the 5 out of 335 will... Uh, do that. Choose a CM introduced to you at six. Make a CR check. Okay, so CR of six, and you're in that's uh, heavy jungle. Dense jungle, Dense correct. jungle, which is minus three CR. Minus four for aviation. And, okay, so minus four, so better better get lucky. That won't do it. Um, so that's a mission for them. Right. And then the other guy is going to try and reveal... I you know what? And since you did a mission, mm -hmm. um, before that even occurred, I'm going to try to shoot at you again. Ah, there's a yes. uh, modifier for that, too. Yes. So now those two modifiers we had, if you look at the bottom, I'm the 394 unit, but you're conducting oh. a surveillance mission. Yeah. So it's a, it's a straight up roll. Mm -hmm. So let's see here. Yeah, that is a horrible roll. That's not going to do it. Some of pointed out last time i forgot when you were doing your uh your surveillance missions to take a shot at you because we were t i was too busy a doing exposition all right so your next guy what is he gonna do all right he's gonna try and reveal um number two i think okay so, so same deal it's uh minus three cr minus for, four minus four for jungle hills right yep okay so same roll uh that no. won't do it so all right, so that did not go off. He gets a mission, and then we go to the reconnaissance step. You go first. You can choose anybody you want to go on patrol. Mm -hmm. H has to be foot companies, you know, infantry companies. Mm -hmm. And uh, after you do that, make those choices, then you can do your reconnaissance missions. I don't think I'm going to put anybody on patrol. Okay. Actually. Uh, but what I can do is try and work that, those concealments in 3010. Okay. With the uh, Special Forces guys. Okay, so I'm in Dense Jungle, uh -huh. which is a mi minus three, minus and you've got, a, you've got a seven. So this is Recon versus... Yeah. Okay, so let's roll... Look at that. That's a, Which one were you doing, number four or number, number one? Number, uh, there's only concealment. Oh, I guess I have to pick one, top one, if I didn't say. Okay, so, number so here four. we go. What is in number four? Number four is a dummy. So if successful, all units in a one hex radius are fixed. No, but you weren't fixing. You were going after oh, concealment. Oh, concealment. Yeah, okay. Yep. So he's a dummy and he goes away. Yeah, okay, okay. And I think your other guys are out of range. They are. Okay. So I've got a guy. Does not reveal him. But I have a reconnaissance unit in range, and we're going to try to unfix that very same special forces unit. Okay. So we've got a same thing. we got to roll four. Yep, dense jungle. Oh, look at that. Yep, yep we got him. It would have been automatic. That was just the area effect. So if there were other unfixed guys, I would have gotten them. Okay, so um, let's see here. Now we move. We're done with the reconnaissance, ground reconnaissance segment. Mm -hmm. And there's no searches in this scenario, so we go straight to fires. And I am going first. What to do, what to do. What 
What to do? Well, I think these poor schmucks who are on the road and exposed by your ASA debt are going to try to light up C-128 and we're going to do a combined fires attack by using the guys in that bunker okay. to combine in. So that's going to turn it from 9 to 15. So let's take a look at that. So we're on the fires resolution chart. Mm -hmm. um, we're on 15. Eh, it feels like a waste. Nope. There's really no other way for me to get on the 13 other than to do that. So, all right. Um, this is a combined fires IDF mission. Mm -hmm. So there's no minus one. You're fixed. So that's a plus one. Mm -hmm. And then we look at the train at the bottom, and you are in... Dense jungle. Dense jungle, so that's a minus four. So this is a minus three on the 13 to 15. Here we go. Roll them bones. Mm. That That is called a crap Ooh. roll. That is called a no effect. That is called a General Lee just got shot in the face roll. Almost. Yes, that, that is a bad roll. So both these guys get IDF markers, which in the game look like this. Hmm unit status which indicate that they can't support an attack later okay you know so that's that and now do i have any other fires i want to do mm, not really that was kind of a bad situation so i think we're going to hand it over to you okay so so when we say fires, we're including du direct fire and uh, indirect fire only. Right. So when you look at like the um, sequence of play. Yeah. All right. So the way right, it so works is, see. yeah. So I think what we're going to do is, do I have range here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, I don't. In fact, why the hell is this guy there? I'm wondering why I put that artillery unit where he is. Uh, well, I'm glad he's at full strength now. Just kidding. Yeah, he's... Well, that was where... I mean, I didn't have a lot of choices to where I could actually land. That's so. what that that's what happened. Yep. So, okay. Well, he might end, be, end up getting moved. All right, so aviation step first. Right. Uh, this This unit right here... There's three out of the 335 aviation. Can that carry that artillery? That's the Huey, I think. That can carry it. No, that's a Chinook. See, it says H that's... for heavy. For heavy. Okay. Right. So, yes, it can carry artillery. Okay. But a whole a whole unit? Yes. All right. So he'll go All right. there. So the, the heavies can carry one full, two steps of artillery. You follow? Right. Two steps. Or it could carry like one step of artillery and uh, two steps of foot, or it can carry four, like two infantry companies, mm -hmm. four steps of foot. But it's the only thing that can lift artillery. Or that type of unit, heavy. Transportation, aviation, heavy. All right. Uh, do I load? I might as well load because. Well, remember, finish your movement first. That's the only move, air, aviation movement I have. Um, you don't want to bring the gunship out? Uh, see, that's the thing. I can bring the gunship out if I'm going to attack in the aviation step. It seems like I, I can bring the gunship out then, right? Uh, right? Since it's going to be in support of an attack in the operations phase. Sure, but you're also going to get a movement in the operations phase. So it lets you be flexible. You know, do you want to do stuff in the fires phase? You, you follow, that, yeah. That's also, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it just seems like in this particular... I mean, I can pull the, 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 the gunship out. Uh, it just seems like at the moment, I might as well... It doesn't really matter. Okay. So All right. So we'll, we'll put them out. And, and he can protect those guys from ADF. If, if they're um, adjacent or if they're in the same hex? Well, like your... Um, 
observation aviation, right? Uh-huh. So if you finish your move and you left him there, I'd take another shot at you. Well, then they're going to move. Okay. Um, and in fact, uh, let's see. Yeah, we'll put this guy over here. Put this guy up here. Since I know where your anti-air is. Right. And he's revealed. Right. Yeah, he showed himself. So you're like, back uh, off. So that's all the uh, the aviation movement. Okay, so then I have no AD, so I have no ADF. Yep, load that guy up. All right, all right. And now it's onto your fires. Okay, so I, so all right, so it, it it occurs to me that I'm better off not taking a fires right now, that I'm better off doing the attack and using the the fire ratings in support of that attack rather than attacking now because they can't do both or can they do both. They cannot do both. Okay, so you can support I'll an attack, or you can. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So they are where they're 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 going to be. In fact, well, yeah, that's fine. They're they're where they're going to be. So we have no fires. Okay. So now you get your fires movement step. Okay. Mechanized and motorized. All right. Even though I cannot move into dense jungle, can I shoot into dense jungle? Yes. Okay. And you can attack into it. You just One. can't advance after combat. Uh, let's do it this way first. We'll do one, two. Yep, and you have to stop because now you're in a uh, those red units. Yep, they're AT capable. Yep. So that's okay. I was right. going to stop there anyway. Okay. Okay. And then we're going to go one, two, one, two, three. Uh huh. That is that is definitely not all the movement. Uh, one, two, three. Remember, it's one movement point per hex on those on the brown roads. Ah, okay, right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Right. Five on that. Oh, that's senseless. Um, You're thinking like an operational commander. You're like, I'm going to use a Mazardi. What do I want to rush them up there for? Well, yeah. I, I plan to use a Mazardi, but there's no reason for them not to be uh, hang back a little bit with the range that they have. Right. Right. 12 miles, man. It's 155s. Okay. All right. All right. So that is the fire's movement step. Okay. So you are done. Okay. Yeah. So, so with now the fire's we go. To, phase. Right. Now we go to my operations phase. And this is moving and fighting action mm-hmm. steps. So I move and then I attack. So let's see here. Well, since you're coming adjacent, I think it's time to move back. And let's see. Now my my recoilless rifle battery there mm-hmm. they we look at ground unit status they did idf so i can't move in the action step okay and i can't right and i can't conduct see if uh if you go to the ground unit status it shows you idf can't move in action step or conduct offensive support missions cannot conduct mm. adf mission okay so he's stuck so that's going to guide my movements here I think seven's gonna go. This guy's gonna go. Do and mortars, however, can move. As can your HHCs, even if they do fires. And this guy's gonna go three, five to there. 
So Jordan is clipping his copy of Case Blue. He may still be clipping his copy of Case Blue on the day this thing releases. Yeah, he'll be doing it next week, most definitely. I, I would agree with that statement. This guy's going to go there. And that's that. So I am done with my operations phase. I am not doing any attack. All right. So let's see what we can put together here. <clears throat> All right. Aviation step. Uh, aviation. Loading and unmoving. Loading missions may occur after movement. Okay. Uh, and yet I don't have a good place to put these guys at the moment. There's a nice uh, last session um gordon panza pointed out where your uh, gunship is mm -hmm. in this area is a very valuable hex, but it requires clearing that bunker out yes you know yeah yeah now you could land your mobile guys there but that's risky because you're you're there's there's some chance of adf fire and bad things happening if you land a jason yeah all right so i did do a little bit of aviation movement with okay. that unit am i moving any other aviation uh yes uh, this guy will move here. And you have your guys loaded up at Fire Support Base Dao Tiang. Oh, that's true. You could, like I said, you could be really aggressive and just land in that light wood. Uh, that would be super duper aggressive. And then they can attack this turn, right? Yes, yes, they can. They can. Well, that's, that's being super aggressive, all right. Let's yeah. be super aggressive. Now, just to be clear, before I advise you, remember, I can't see your unit. Those are air mobile infantry, correct? They are air mobile infantry. Okay. Then everything I said was indeed correct. This will be right. fun. So we need to, before I do that, uh, I need to double mission this guy. Not yet. Let's when you that. unload. Don't do it okay. until you actually unload. All right. You're right. We're going to have some special fun times with this. We're going to, we're going to learn some new rules permutations all right so these guys so go here right i would also advise you as, as a as a good player advising on strategy since those av those observation aviation units mm -hmm. still still have missions left and they've got a little bit of fire strength mm -hmm. i would move them adjacent to the to the hex you're landing in like the hex you're, yeah that yeah, like that hex and move the other guy there too like yeah he can exactly here, right okay so are you moving any art uh, anybody with your chinook or are you good uh the yeah he's moved okay all right so he can't land there can't he no he can't that's light jungle um let me see him unfix him oh, for special that. forces and air mobile only so no you're right he can't land there that's why he's yeah, yeah. here all right. Yeah, well, that's why no. he was there. Well, he he can't even be there. That's was, light jungle. He was. Yeah, that's where he was. Yeah. Now, once you clear that hex. Yeah. Okay. And these guys, the hex you want to be landing in, by the way, mm -hmm. is here. See the light woods. Yes. Oh, you could. Oh, but you could land those guys there too. My bad. Yeah, they're I they're air mobile. Not gonna land. Well, the artillery's not air mobile. So it can't right, really right. land anywhere up there except the, right. where I'd be putting but, the artillery in the front line, which I'm not doing. But your air mobile infantry absolutely can land in that light jungle hut. That's so, where all right. Yeah, that's where they're going. Yeah. So now let's execute it. So you are going to unload. Yep. As you do so, when the U.S. lands with units that can land adjacent mm -hmm. to, to NLF, which is only air mobile and special forces, okay? To include that air mobile artillery unit that you have a little further south, right? Yeah, he's not yeah. He's not doing anything. Uh, he right. did not get moved. Right. I'm just throwing him in the mix of people the U.S. have that can land adjacent to enemy, even a concealment right. marker, right? So we go to ADF resolution. I then can do small arms ADF fire. So any infantry unit, you know, if can can uh, for the NLF can uh, any unit that's not ADF capable can mm -hmm. unfix themselves and do small arms fire. So as you see, I got two NVA companies. You hover over it for that's the people. The guy in the sit, bunker, sitting in the bunker, right? Okay. They don't they don't add up. So it's just small arms, and that's it. So it's that one asterisk column on the ADF column. Okay. All right. So 
what also when loading unloading you get a shot at whether with adf capable or with small arms you get a shot at each unit that's doing the loading and unloading mission right. so we well, let's look at the mods so you are escorted by an attack aviation unit because uh -huh. you have one in that hex right there is so that means there's right. five factors adjacent to that hex right but you have one actually in the hex so we're going to do this that's what you wanted to do oh Trust okay me. i see what right. you're saying right so they're escorted so i so there's not an extra plus one okay then you are though a transportation aviation unit conducting a loading or unloading mission there's uh -huh. no getting around that so that's a plus one right all right I'm not ADF capable, so I don't get that bunker modifier. Right. Okay. Um, you're not doing a surveillance mission. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not. It's not above that. It's not the PLAF 394 unit. But you do see there. You have the two stacking modifiers. You have more than three. Right. Avi attack aviation AV and or adjacent six and or adjacent. So it says more so, than six. I have six. Right. Oh no, that's actually. I guess we count the uh, the ones uh, that are doing the mission as well, right? Ah, uh, no, no. Actually, you don't have more than six. I'm so sorry. in that so case, it the... is just six. Right. That's fine. So, what? You... And it's and it's got to be. And I misled you by having you move these guys over. Didn't matter. It has to be attack aviation AV. So look at me screwing up my own rules. But you get. You're escorted, and you get that minus one for more than three. That's what right. you want. Okay. Can you follow me? All right. Yeah. So net so, minus one, is that right? Right. Okay. So I need to basically roll boxcars for anything to happen. And that I was, did not. That was not it. That was not it. Now we'll do it for the second unit that's unloading. Close, Close. but no cigar. So now give those units, uh, the aviation units, mission. And mark those guys as landed. All right. So. And since you're landing next to the enemy, there's an ex another extra special thing. Okay. And we're gonna unload this this dude too, by the way. Right. So you unloaded them both. Yeah, he just unloads. Now those two guys that unloaded next to adjacent to the enemy, mm -hmm. they both have CRs of sixes, which I know. You know, both those guys. Each guy unmodified by terrain. Uh huh. And this is all, by the way, on the there's an aviation and loading chart if you open it up. Huh. Okay. Okay. Goes through all this stuff for all air mobile, infant special forces, you know, for the ground units, terrain. Can't so you see, see um, like where it says ground units on that chart? Yeah. For normal infantry, cannot unload adjacent to enemy units. Um, right. But can all right. So you have to make an unmodified. So you see where it says if enemy adjacent. For each one of those guys, you have to make an unmodified CR check, and if you're unsuccessful. Okay. You're strung out. All right. So for the so for the top guy, make a roll. He is okay. And the bottom guy. Oh, he is not okay. So he is He's strung okay. out. Right. And you can unfix them both because we're we're adjacent now. Okay. Yeah. You unfixed yourself. Right, and that's just. Oops. So that reflects, yeah, that just reflects the capability. You know, the, these air mobile companies, these air mobile battalion units, right, were trained mm -hmm. to do this sort of mission. Land adjacent, attack, you know, all that sort of stuff. But they've got to make a CR check, right. you know. To not, so the one guy who's strung out, he can't attack and has Still. all his movement. Right. Yeah. But the other guy can. Right. Okay. okay. So... That's it for loading on a loading, which was very adventurous this turn. Mm -hmm. And now we go to um, the action step. Right. You can move your stuff. Now, those guys, by the way, can move because they land in a light jungle. If we go back to that. Uh, the strung aviation. out guys. Yeah. Ch check it out. So first of all, on the aviation chart, right? Uh-huh. Um, I'm sorry, not the aviation, the ground unit status chart. 
Yep. If you look at landed, mm -hmm. where it says effect. Right. Movement's halved. So it's halved twice? No. it's just, No, no. So his movement, the other guy isn't land. Don't give him landed strung out instead. Okay, wait a minute. Just so one land. guy is landed. They're both landed, and the other guy is landed and strung out. Yeah, but get rid of the landed. The strung out supersedes it. Okay. Yep. Uh, all right, but the other guy stays landed. Correct. Okay. So his M his MV is halved. Right. You didn't you didn't land in dense jungle, so that second bullet doesn't apply. Uh huh. But you can't perform any more CR checks. But you can still attack. Okay. You're str you're strung out, guy. Mm hmm. He's got combat penalties. He can't attack. He's MV's halved. He gets no. Uh, that's just for NLF the automatic reaction move, and he right. can't do any CR check. Okay. That's it. Okay, so um, the guy who's strung out, I think, will move, make his minimum move back to the hex behind him. This guy, on the other hand. We'll move up. This guy will move up. All right, un unfix yourself. Hey, everybody who moves up, show yourself to the world. Yep. And this guy will move up. Okay. So doing it all. All right. Anybody else? Remember, you can move everybody else. Um, the the special forces guys do suffer the effects of Zox. No, I'll definitely move this 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 guy up. One, two. I want to say that's it. Okay. Move your special forces guy up. Remember, you can move that armored cav unit a full movement too. Uh, the guy in twenty five twelve. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm actually I, I kind of want him where he's at. Rock on! All right, Just so to that's that. Any foolishness from Hitler in the backfield. Right now it's attack times. You All can right. Just one by one, declare attacks. Well, everything that I can throw at it is going against that bunker. Okay. So well, that's. Um, so what I count is, and I can I can combine the attacks in, from multiple stacks, correct? Yes, you can. Okay. So I'm seeing, in terms of just raw infantry factors, from from thirty thirteen, I'm seeing eight. Correct. And then another 13 for 21 from 34, 13. Right. So that would be 21 ground factors. Mm -hmm. Plus, you can throw in a maximum of 42 offensive support to that okay. attack. So we're going to have four from the from the gunship. Okay. We're give him a mission. Okay. We're going to have... Three from the HHC. Show him to the world. Fix him and go right ahead. Uh, we are going to throw in nine from the self-propelled gun. Okay. And that is, I think, nope, that is not everything we can have. Six more from the, the air mobile artillery. Okay. Three, Show six, him to the world. 15 plus seven. So unfix him. So All right. 15 plus 7 is 22 plus 21 is 43. 43. So you're attacking with 43 against mm -hmm. my 6. Now I do defensive support. So this guy up here exposes himself. He's 3. I can provide a maximum of 16 support to this attack. The that guy walked away, so he can't support it. But the recoilless rifles 
rifle battery can support defenses. Mm -hmm. Unlimited number of defenses. So we're throwing an eight there, and let's see if I have anybody else in range. I don't think so. Nope. So we've got eight in in uh, defensive support, supporting that defense. So that's against 16. So you've got, what was it again? 40 what? 43. 43 attacking 16. What's 43 divided by 16? Uh, it's at least 3 to 1, right? That is a 2.6, but oh, because shit. we use the... Oh, right. But, Be right. <laughs> we, use, we use the rounding rule in this game. You know, round okay. normally. Round truly. So you've got a 3 to 1. Okay. So we... So we go to the attack step resolution. You got a three to one. However, um, is it NLF? Are the NLF guys in that bunker? Yes. Okay. So they're defending in a bunker. So that's one shift down. Right. Do all the attack modifiers first. That's right. my suggestion. Yeah. All right. So attack rods are five to one or more. No. Uh, attack support strength is greater than defender ground defense, which is definitely true. Right. So that's, so that's worth plus, a plus one. one. Uh, attacker support strength double or greater than defender ground defense. That's also definitely true. That's plus four. Mm -hmm. Attacking for more than two hexes. That is not the case. Right. Uh, hex contains strung out units. That's the target hex, right? Yes. Okay, yes. that's not the case anyway. Uh, nobody's disrupted. There's no mech. There's no armor. To NLF force if it contains unfixed units, which I think nope. is not correct. Okay. No. Uh, defending hex contains land units. No attacking U.S. command base. Okay, so I see a plus four with right. the shift down. Plus the terrain, which is wooded uh, jungle hills, which is minus four. So it's a straight up two to one. Straight up two to one. Well, let's see what that turns into. This is a 2d6 roll, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Seven. A seven. AO. What is an AO result? Uh, it looks like nothing. That is it. No effect. That's okay. it. Okay. No, nothing. So, any other attack? Sure. Um, we are actually going to pop that uh, concealed. Oh, no, we're not. We're not shooting at the concealed guy. Well, though, I think that applies. Uh, your hex 3110. Right. Uh, can I shoot that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that's within range of the other eight artillery. Um, that's eight, right? Six factors. Okay, so we're going to... Uh, you are one hex short of that range, my friend. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, you're right. Now, you do have five air points you could throw. But remember, if you uh, if we look at the attack chart, mm -hmm. if concealed units are defending, that's worth it's two, two shifts for the defender. Yeah. See, that's really more of a fires attack, except we're not in that phase. So right. Um. All right, so, plus I don't know what else you have in there. Right. You could have another six points in there, in which case I'd end up with something like a less than one-to-one, -one, which sounds undesirable. So I think I think that is an attack I'm not going to do. Okay. All right. Uh, so that is my attack step. Okay, so nobody we are... nobody retreats I... or advances since nothing happened at the end of the day. Nope. So now we go to the final ISR phase. So I don't have any accrued concealment mm -hmm. markers, so you may move your aviation as you... Uh, right, so everybody's basically done. No, we'll put this guy here. This guy back at the base, I think. This guy's flying back to base since he's done done. This guy's flying back to base since he's done done. And you got this guy if you want to 
send him back. I could send him back. Yeah, I got him. All right. All right. Uh, so that's that's done. Right. You finished your aviation move? Yes. I don't have any ADF fire. So now we go to um, the intelligence step. We start yes. with your ASA detachment guy. So pick and guess. Uh, concealment marker one uh, and PLF. PLAF. All right, let's see what's inside. <coughs> you are correct. Roll to see if he's revealed fixed or unfixed. Uh, he looks is like he's fixed. Right. That's that. Right. Move from play. And then we'll go to... My intelligence thingy. And I am going to try to reveal... With the 9th PLAF Division Headquarters, the guy in 2711. And I got to make a roll. And I'm at minus three, so it's a three or less. I yeah. made it. He's fixed. That's 2711. Okay. Yeah. We, we caught traffic. Let's see. All right. So we have 2711. Uh, observation versus concealment. So this is the air unit in 3213 is going to try to reveal concealment marker number six. Right. That's probably a minus four. Yeah. So that, that won't do yeah. it. All right, right. The second air guy, give him a mission. And this other uh, air recon at 3311 will try the same hex concealment marker six and he fails to so they have no okay. idea there's jungle down there sir yes, exactly all right so now we go to the reconnaissance step it's just the same as it was before except no patrolling mm -hmm. and no cash searches so our recon guys all right so you first um concealment marker number seven okay um am i doing uh cr check so seven versus minus three or minus that I think you have, like, unfixed yourself through your actions, everybody that I would want to unfix. So my recon guy can't really do anything. So, or it's moot. So uh, now let's go to the refresh phase. So all your aviation goes home, except for Spooky and Red Haze, who aren't on the map. They're not in play in this game. All right, that's the aviation. And I will hit the end turn marker, which basically does all the other counter cleanup mm -hmm. here. And I'll hit the move marker. And let's see if we have any questions. So let's see. Jordan McMullen asks, what's the game's solitaire suitability? I would mark it. So I called it medium, Jordan. Um... I think that the combat effects of being concealed and fixed and unfixed, uh, those permutations make the game more attractive, moving it from a low to a medium. But the response I say to everybody is the same. It, it's I think it's a far, far better game opposed than solo. I, I mean, there's hidden information. There's also a lot, of, especially in the campaign, there's bluff and counter bluff. And I think you just lose a lot of that when you're playing solitaire. It's great to learn solitaire. And I think you can have fun playing at solitaire. But that's why I said it would have been a low, in my opinion, but went to medium. Because like like you just saw, the possibility of attacking a concealment marker. So even if you remember some information, there are combat effects from these ISR status. Um, next question is, well, this for you too, Gary. John Longshore wants to know what brought us together. You know, uh, do we, uh, it, long time interaction on Twitter for the most part. Yeah, so we just always in interacted. Yeah, yeah. And when the when the coronavirus hit, we said, "Hey, let's just play." And I think we we share the same sensibilities in terms of how to play. And there's a lot of overlap. Know. Yep, yep, yep. And the stuff we like to play, and it's just fun. So let's see here. Um, 
John Longshore mentioned having this be a system for Burma or Guadalcanal in World War II. Uh, I, I, so, like, Gary, what was your reaction when you first saw this was um, a company-scale game? Remember? That you thought was it would that, be well, that tactical. sounds like a tactical, more of a tactical game anyway, more right. so than operational. Right. And, and John, I know you got a little bit of a military. You've got a military background. I don't want to say a little bit. I don't know what it is, but I know you do. It operational skill depends. So for Vietnam, you know, at this scale, battalion is not the way to go. You you lose the nuance of the terrain. You lose, um, you lose differences in MTO structures that that really play out differently, in my opinion, at this scale. But for if I was doing a World War II theater, I would do it from a ground up build. I might I might use some of these ideas, but maybe not. Um, if you know, I, I think Burma might be done well on a company scale doing an operational game, possibly Guadalcanal, maybe, but there, there's a lot of air and naval that would have to go into that. So, there's a yeah, lot you know, of moving pieces on Guadalcanal, right? I, I, you know, you know, but in terms of scale, I actually think a mile per hex might be a little too small. Um, for Guadalcanal, uh, you know, I might want to move it up a bit. I, you know, I don't know. I, I hadn't really applied a lot of, you know, I, I, I've thought about it notionally about how I'd approach it. I think Guadalcanal is something that deserves a good operational treatment and has never gotten one. Um, you know, but, you know, it, 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 you know, it, that's why I always say, you know, what's the best scale or what, what is the operational scale? Well, the operational scale could, you know, depends on the operation. Mm -hmm. It could venture anywhere from like, I would say the lowest I would ever go is like company scale here. But if we were doing like case blue, which, mm -hmm. which, uh, you know, Jordan's clipping, I think it's regiments and divisions is operational. Depends yeah. on the theater, right? Yeah. There's battalions in there as well, but it's, yeah. it's, it's pretty much a regiment to division scale. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, so, so like here, this is, this is mainly company, but I do have some detachments and platoons and that's and my, my break point for that in this game was like when I needed to reflect the capability. So we have like a, um, you know, your, your ASA detachment, Gary, right? Mm -hmm. It's a detachment, but it reflects an important capability and has to be modeled, mm -hmm. you, you know? So, so, so it meets the smell test of smaller than company. Um, so that's it. That's it for the question. Yeah, and very so, few games stick strictly to a single unit size anyway. I think that way lies madness. Yeah, well, that, that way lies very early SPI and Avalon Hill games. I Correct. That nobody's probably designing with those ideas in mind anymore very much. I was thinking, like, even, like, Guns of August, like, the first game I ever got when I was, Ooh. like, what, 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 11? It has divisions. Yes. You know, you know, it has it has um, some subdivision size, you know, like... Uh, I, I got a, another, a new copy, not new, but I, I got a copy of it after not having it for many years, and I haven't even looked at the thing. Is it all divisions? Yeah, because it might. Be. Um, no, it's core. Is it okay? Actually, but the U.S. But the U.S. units are divisions. Okay. And then they're like I said, they're subdivisional units, fortress engineers and railroad engineers and that. Yeah. And uh, before we keep going, no, I, I have you ever played Path to Path to Glory, Gary? Me? Yeah, I played quite a bit actually. Hey, we're talking if we're talking about Paths of Glory, Ted Rasier design. Yes. Is it Paths of Glory or Paths to Glory? It is Paths of Glory is the game I'm talking yes, about. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to... Board Game Geek is title. See if there's a Paths to Glory. Because I was about to make the same answer. No, there's a Path to Glory game. I've got a very well-received tutorial series of videos on Paths of Glory, which I think there's three episodes. And I took so long to do the fourth episode, which has got it got half made multiple times. Um, it took so long that uh, Ben Harsh from Harsh Rules started covering Paths of Glory, so I give up. I'll talk about that in the monthly update, but there will be no episode four of Paths of Glory from me. So, for, yeah, for talking about Paths of Glory, it's okay. It's it's World War One on rails. I like you know, it. It is on rails. I like it a yeah. lot for what it is. Uh, but right. it, you know, it is not a simulation. Let's let's. I I would prefer to put it that way. Yep. Yep. So let's go. Yeah, I, I played twice and I was like, I've played it enough. You know, it's okay. You know, it, but, it, you know, you, you're not really creatively expressing yourself. It's about card oh, play. Oh, no. 
Yeah, it's right. it's a it's right. a it's a very good competitive board game. Right. So now let's go to. Um, do you need to take a break or anything? You want to just keep going? Uh, we can keep going. Let's keep going. So, all right. So we're at the beginning of tra- the I'm gonna, last. I'm just going to turn my air conditioning on because I'm roasting in here for some reason. Why are you roasting? It's all this in? mental effort. Oh yeah. No sure. doubt. Sure. So we go back to you having the initiative. I'll flip that. And as we're because this is the last turn. Oh, this is only three turns. Three turns. Okay. Interesting area. So right now I'm in the lead with two victory points. Okay. Let's see how this goes. So. We go back to the beginning of the aviation step. You don't need to determine the status of anybody. Nobody got hurt or or anything. Right. Uh, there's no reinforcements. There's no replacements. Mm-hmm. Reorganization. I don't think anybody even got disrupted this turn. Uh, nope. I undisrupted all my disrupted guys last turn. Right. So we don't do that. Now we go to the initiative step. You're the initiative player. You pick when you want to go. Oh, I'm totally going first. All right. Totally. I'm totally going first. Totally. Totally, dude. Totally to the max. I'm not All even right. in California, dude. <laughs> All right. So we now go to the most important part for us, which is fixing and unfixing units. Yeah. So. So. Uh, so anybody that's not adjacent at this point can become unfixed, correct? Correct. Right. All right. Nobody so. has contact, so nobody knows the exact how they're disposed, what the position's like. Uh, That's basically it for me. Yeah, and I believe that is basically it for me. So now we go to the concealment stuff. I may place, once again, place all, some, or none of my concealment markers. Now. I know you have a couple available. Yeah. Those guys who are adjacent to you, Mm -hmm. I cannot conceal them. Okay. It's just like I couldn't be unfixed. Mm -hmm. I can't conceal. All right, because you've maintained contact. Mm-hmm. So, which is for the, for a U.S. player in this game, that's the way to keep the wily communists mm-hmm. from hiding again is to bird dog them and maintain contact. So, let's see here. But we are certainly place them. This guy will go. Here. And boom. Hit the move flags. I'm done with my concealment. Over to you for aviation. Okay. Um, all right, so the, all right, I do have uh, an extra air mobile guy, which I might as well move. That's this guy. An an extra air mobile guy? There's a guy down at FSB.TA. I know, I'm kidding. Like, what, what do you mean extra? I don't know if it's going to be useful to move him or not. My suspicion would be not, but we'll give it a shot anyway. You um, could land him adjacent to me and attack. I could. I mean, and I, I probably, that's probably exactly what I'm going to do. All right. Um, the recon guys. Those are these guys. Uh, we're going to put one right here, I think. And... One right here. That is all the aviation that is occurring at this time. Okay, I have no movement. I have no ADF fire. Okay, well I didn't move over there. Uh, We'll give this guy down here a mission and load the last year mobile guy up. Like a mule. Okay, so that's that. That is your aviation step. Now we go to. The guy's on the mountain. You're part of the intelligence. All right. The intelligence step. All right. Um, concealment marker number four. Um, PLAF? 
number quattro. Let's see, number quattro. It is indeed PLAF. Roll, make a CR check to see if they're revealed fixed or unfixed. They are fixed. Water Company. Okay, not the HQ. Nope. All right. Uh, surveillance. Well, you have yes. intelligence as well, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, fix. Right. Well, you are considering that. I'm going to vanish for about 60 seconds. I'll be right back. All right. I don't think I really want to unfix anybody, guys. Audience. Because it doesn't do me much good. Basically, I'm getting gamey. It's the last turn. And he's going to come and try to attack me. So, eh. All right, I'm back. Uh, all right, I am going to try to unfix... The guy in 3014. So he's in dense jungle. I've got a CR of six from gotcha. my headquarters, which nobody can see because mm -hmm. they're concealed. And we need a three or less. We failed. Okay. So Should I have he... fixed the other guy underneath him, that, the guy that's strung out? He should be unfixed as well, yes. Okay. And that strung out should have left him. So let Oh, it did, actually. Well, he was. Okay. He was. Good, good. Up. Good, good. All right. Very good. All right. So now, surveillance. Correct. Okay. So we're doing uh, surveillance with the observation choppers on concealment marker number six. Right. Which is minus four. Look at that. Ah, number six. Let's see who's in number six. Whoa, come back, bunker. I could swear there was a bunker there. Come back. And as you see on the mission chart for against CM, they're they're just unfixed. Mm-hmm. Okay. So there's a bunker with some unfixed units in it, but okay. it's a positive enemy present. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, let's go up against with the other recon chopper. We'll go against um, concealment marker number three. Number three. Okay. This is a two or less. Minus four for the jungle hills. Look at that. Ooh. Number three, you are kicking ass unfortunately number three is a dummy oh okay okay give those boys missions they did good today in the bad terrain the u.s observation chopper you know that there are other u.s observation fixed wing craft in the game that mm -hmm. are little but in this bad terrain it's basic about a lot of bites at the apple and as you're seeing as you're playing i'm sure it's a lot about well do I want to reveal concealment markers with like a two or three or less, or do I want to use those guys to try to unfix, you know, you know fix unfixed guys mm -hmm. and use my recon, which are better. You know, it's, it's using your ISR in different ways. Yeah. It's an interesting strategic yeah. uh, or operational choice, I should say. Yeah. So now, um, all right. So that's it for observation. Now we go to recon. You go first. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, we could try to reveal concealment marker number seven, uh, PLAF. No, no, this is your recon. Recon. Oh, right. Okay. So, right. So you look for something within three hexes. All right. Uh, so concealment marker number seven. Okay. And look at that. All right. They are revealed. Boy, things. these guys are eating their carrots this week, aren't they? Aren't they? Right. And if we look at the... just. <coughs> Really, for the audience, so look at the ISR and command chart real quick. So you see recon versus CM. Mm -hmm. 
it tells you the effect that the units are fixed because some other like the like we just did with the choppers those guys run fixed but right. you see if successful they're fixed why because yeah. the guys have eyes on yeah they're so, on the ground right under the canopy right so who was in concealment marker seven Ooh, was the NVA? Oh. They they moved. All right, so now for my reconnaissance, I don't really have any. Yeah, there's at least one that I see that you could try to unfix. Yeah, we're gonna try to get those guys in that um, hex. What is it? Thirty fourteen. So okay. I'm not going to bother doing the roll because there's no radius effect possible for me. So it's just the guys in the hex run fit. Okay. Because I'm right. Whoa, not you. Ah. Boy, okay. it's awfully nice to be able to read the hex numbers. Yeah. I'm just saying. It's, you know, it's amazing when an artist says, hey, the dark, maybe they should be white hex numbers. You know? Amazing. Just, uh, just amazing. Yeah. So, Such all right. Such insight. That's. You know, it's crazy talk. So, all right, so we are done with that. Now we go to the fires phase. I do have fires. We are going to fires on that special, uh, the Vietnamese Special Forces unit. Well, remember, you got an aviation step first. Oh, that's true. Okay. So. Slow your roll. All right, so I can support that fires with aviation. And I think I'm going to do that. Put it here. And we have to aviate these guys up here. Yeah, Jordan McMullen, I saw your comments. Like, everyone tends to think of Vietnam as like, oh, there were tunnels and this. And these. Different places and different campaigns where different things existed. But we think of just this... We played a lot of games that have a lot of generic pop culture stuff that have all that stuff thrown into them, okay? Or films that, that refer to these things. But yeah, there were minor tunnel complexes here, but what these really were were bunker sites. Sorry about that, Gary. Continue. Yeah. All right, I switched uh, switched planes. Uh, so loading on missions uh, uh, may occur after movement. So I moved two air units, one into 2812 and the other into 3013. Right. Okay. So the guys so, yeah. at the end of that, the guys in 3013 are going to unload. Okay. So you've got one unit unloading. Mm hmm. So it's going to be one small arms ADF. So let's pull up the ADF chart and look at the mods. I think I just get plus one because you're conducting a loading or unloading mission. Uh -huh. And then I get minus one because of your three attack aviation. AV. So that turns into a straight up. Uh huh. Um, let's see if there's any. Yeah, that's it. Straight up roll. And let's see what happens on the small arms chart. That's Ooh. a big nothing. So now, before you do landed for the guy, roll to see, uh, make that CR check for him on modified to see Look if he's strung out. Ah, They're landing balls. gung ho and everything. Balls of steel. So, yep, they are la they're just given landed status, and that's it. All right, and they're actually... fixed. That guy's done. Let's pull him out of there. He's fixed. Uh, did that escort, was that considered a mission for the... No, no. Okay. So, so the, way, the, way, the way the chart works is... He just can't be mission complete. So it's about that modifier is all okay. about how many attack aviation are in or adjacent, mm -hmm. right? And then it's about they can't be mission complete because if they're mission complete, they can't help suppress that ADF fire. Right. Right. That's it. So you could have one mission left and still be fine. It doesn't count as a mission. It's just an okay. effect. Okay. Yep. So you are done with your aviation move. I am. Now it's fires time. Okay, so we're going to do a fires, and we're going to unload with all that uh, mech on that North Vietnamese ah, Special Forces. Okay, right. So so do you have any IDF? So let's look at, pull up the sequence of play. 
So that's direct fire. You see, mm-hmm. is the last is the um, the last yeah. segment there. So, do you have anything else you want to do before you do? So, I, I have indirect fire. Can I use it to support the direct fire mission? Yeah. So, let's walk through fires for okay. a sec, and I'll explain that. So, you're not doing any obviously any interdiction, right? Correct. That's correct. So, if you do. Bob, the cap, if you were doing just bombardment, mm-hmm. so air, is nine. Right. If you were doing just IDF, it's nine. Mm-hmm. Okay? However, <coughs> you can combine the two or direct fire with it, but it's an IDF mission. So now let's look at the fire's resolution chart. Okay. Notice there's that minus one for IDF mission does not apply to combined fire's IDF mission. Okay modifier Ah, that's what we call a combined fires idf mission it's also the only way you can get above nine on this chart Mm -hmm. with idf or air and in fact one of the things from the play test is we're throwing a reminder in for that kind of stuff on Mm -hmm. this chart okay so you know reminder yeah you know so one less thing to look up right so what that means is you've got if we look at that hex with the direct fire right Uh uh-huh You've got 12, you've got 16 sitting there. You could like throw in your, um, some IDF with it mm-hmm. and push it up to 18 maximum. But if we look at the fires chart, I don't think that does you any good. Because the chart is 16 to 18. So why would you want to kick in any IDF with it? Yeah, okay, I see what you mean. Right. Yeah, why, right. Why, well, so I, I will only because I have a an artillery unit in the backfield that can't shoot at anybody else. So, and I don't think he could shoot at them either. One, two, three, four, oh yeah. five, six, seven, eight. Nope, you're one hex short, my friend. From 2214, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hexes. One, two, The target three, is in 2911. Seven, eight. Yes, yes. No, he, the, the, oh, you're shooting at that guy. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and use them. Yeah, doesn't make any difference. Maybe I shouldn't, actually. Maybe I should shoot at the other one. Shouldn't give you ideas. Okay. Yeah, we'll shoot at that one, actually, on eight on an 18. That makes most the more sense. So everybody there is fixed, so that's worth a plus one to the roll. Right. And we right. are using only direct fire. Yeah, doesn't matter unless you're three AV over that. So that's the only way you can over get on 18. that. 19. Okay, okay. I see the only way. Mean. So in the game, the only way you can get on that 19 plus chart is for it to all be direct fire and over. So if that guy was there, mm-hmm. you'd be 19. You'd still be. You, you follow what I'm saying? But if yeah. you had enough factors, it starts to just. It's diminishing. Where terrain is minus. Dense Ooh, jungles minus four. four. Minus four. Okay, so that becomes a. F- uh, four five. five which gives me an a d1 s1 so i have to take a step and somebody gets disrupted so this guy's gonna take the step let me flip him and he will be disrupted and we look at the victory points for the scenario and i believe you get a victory point for where are we tra- step, where are we step. tracking victory points uh, they are on the the main records track. It says RP. Ah, okay. Yep. And I haven't you get, this up very much at all. And you get one victory point. So from zero to one. Okay. All right, let me... First vassal here. Okay. So, uh, do I have any other fires? I don't believe so. Unless I want okay. to t- take that six shot at the special forces, which I probably should actually. Go for it. I think I Let's do. See. Yeah, uh, yeah. And this is going to be fixed units so, in hex, so plus one, but minus four. Right. So go ahead and um, fix your artillery unit that's over there. All right, that's it. Uh, mark him for IDF. That's it. And notice it zeroes out his movement, you know, mm-hmm. reminds you you can't move. And now that's it. 
So it's the same thing. It's a net minus three, so it's a five on the six. It's a D1. He is disrupted. Okay. All right. Reas- reasonable roll, so. Right. All right. All right, so that's my fire's uh, step. You can move all your mechanized units, their full movement allowed. Alright, so we are going to do that. We're going to put this guy here. That's going to be it. What's the stacking limit again? Is it four units? Four. Well, I can't can't drive up the road through your Vietnamese special forces guys, so that's where he's going. Alright. No other fires movement? Nope. Okay. So we are, we need to do us some fire. So this feels like it's the last game turn, so I think I'm all in. So this concealment marker empties out. And he's going to fire. Hell, I'm not sure we have any eight-lane highways here in Ohio, to be completely honest about it. This guy's going to do IDF. And we're going to add it in with direct fire from the uh, recoilless rifle guys. And we are going to try to light up... um, where your tanks and well, the guys from the 11th, uh, the squadron sure. from the 11th Armored okay. Cavalry there. Gotcha. So that's <coughs> seven. So we're going to be on the 12. And you are fixed. So plus one. Uh, it is a combined fires mission, so I don't get a minus one. There's nothing special going on in terms of of column shifts but the terrain for you is dense jungle i believe yep yep so it's minus four so it's a minus three on the 12 that's a five five which is d1 someone has to be disrupted okay and (coughs) i am also going to do direct fire by itself from that bunker just shoot at somebody okay we're gonna shoot at all the uh guys from second of the 503rd they are mobile infantry sitting over there okay so we've got six and it's direct fire so we're on the six and you're fixed so it's plus once uh-huh. and you're you're in sh- minus crappy tra- Oh, uh, you're in light, light jungle, actually. So you're that's light minus jungle. three. So this is six with a minus two. A seven. Ooh. So that's a D1S1. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Killed some more Americans. So what do we got here? Uh, I guess we'll disrupt this. We'll flip and disrupt this guy. I can do that, right? Yeah. Can disrupt yeah. the same guy that took the step? All right. Absolutely. It's... <laughs> it's the defender's discretion. And I get two victory points. Go revolution. Two. Okay. And that's it for my fires. I am done. Okay. So now we go to your operations phase. All right. Hey, John, John Longshore, have a good night. Aviation. Yeah, have a good one. All right. So uh, I might as well pull these guys back. At this point, I can pull this guy actually. Pull both of these guys over here since they might they might as well throw those factors in. Yeah, the final ISR phase isn't going to matter that much, right? It's the last turn. Yeah. You know? So yeah. Uh, this guy's done, so I must might as well fly him home. That's it for aviation. You have this guy. Oh, you're right. 
put him the, in Hue the Hueys could come and shoot some machine guns. Put him here as well. Okay. All right. And, nice. so, all right. All right. Uh, for the for the action step, we're going to take this if I can find him. We'll take this guy and we're going to move him over here. Nope, not there. Here. We're going to take. I can slide from Zok to Zok, correct? Yes, you can always move one hex, right? Take this guy and move him here. This guy will move up here. Yeah, okay. That's movement. Okay, so do your attacks as you okay, see Okay, so fit. let's see what we have for ground factors. Uh, we have one from the Special Forces. Uh, we have eight. We have, so that's nine. Um, plus 12 is 21. Plus five is 26. 26 ground. Um, in addition to that, I have 5, 6, 7, 8 from the choppers. Okay. So you have 20, so you have 26 ground, so you could throw yep. in a total of 52 support. I, I don't have 52, so. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. And then from uh, various artillery, I have 3, 9, and another 9 for 18. All right, so yeah. that's 26. You also, you also have five air points. You haven't used Throw them once. In. All right. They zero out. All right, so that's 32, 42, 55 total. So you have 55 attacking my 8. Mm -hmm. I have... I can have a maximum of 16 support, which I do not have in rank, but I do have 5, 9, 20. So you're attacking 20. 55, which puts me at 3 to 1. Rounding, okay. rounding, you know, normally, that puts me at 3 to 1. Okay. So, looking at the attack resolution. All right, so no... Uh, for attacker support strength greater than defender ground defense, that's a yes. Uh, plus double or greater, so that's worth a plus four. Uh, we are attacking for more than two hexes this time. We are, in fact, attacking from four hexes. Right. Uh, that's plus five. Yeah. Um, that's it from the modifiers. Plus the, the terrain, which will be minus four. So you're a plus one. Mm -hmm. And then it's a and bunker. So it's a two to one plus one. Yep, it's a two to one plus one. Let's roll it and see what happens. Well, that's pretty that's a good. good. That's a that's good an roll. 11 on a two to one. That's a that is R1. Indeed. So retreat, I have to retreat. All units disrupted. Correct. So they are going to retreat. here <coughs> but no step losses D it was a dr1 that's a step loss DR oh okay yeah flip that gives you a victory point ah okay yeah dr1 yep uh, i had and it and then yeah i did not fit uh fit with that's my problem you may advance after combat. Oh, we're advancing. Does that bunker go away? Yes. All right, so get rid of him. And that gives you some more victory points in this scenario. Okay. So Two we'll per bunker destroy. Guy. We'll advance this guy. We'll advance you got this two, guy. You got I must advance into the vacated hex and nowhere else, correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. So that gives you two more victory points, so we're tied at four because for destroying the bunker. Okay. That was a good job. And any other attacks?
I'm thinking I'm going to hit that uh, Special Forces again. Okay, so you've used all your stuff for attack support. Uh, that is correct. So, except for, and your artillery you used in the fires, that, mm -hmm. that would have been a yep. right. So who are you going to attack with? That mechanized stack and the recon guy. They're not really recon, but you know what right. I said, the armored cav. So basically the three units for armored cab that aren't disrupted. So that's a total of 16. Right. You're attacking two. Mm -hmm. So that's an eight to one. Minus four for the jungle. Well, let's go through the mods, right? Okay. So attacker odds are five to one mm -hmm. or plus two if, uh, if uh, odds are seven to one or greater. So you get a plus two for being seven to one or greater. Okay. Okay. And then, nope. There's nope, no support you don't have any strength. More. Right. I'm not, not attacking, attacking for more than two hexes. Right. But uh, I'm disrupted. Oh, you are disrupted. That's a plus two. So that's a total of plus four. Our armor is present. That's another plus two. Right. And mech is present, which are your armored cab guys. So that's, that's plus seven. Right. Right. And so plus seven. Then we look at the terrain mod. Terrain and will I be am, minus three or four, I'm sure. I'm in dense jungle, so it's uh -huh. minus four. Okay, so plus three. Right. So six to one and plus three. Yeah, I'll take that. Okay. Woo! Yep. Okay. Yeah, that smokes them. Yeah. We're done. All right. So they are... Hey. Scouts reported there's some Vietnamese special forces in this area, Commander, but uh, all we found was a smoking crater. Yeah, I can't. Man, he used to have a, like, ascend to the Deadpool thing. Let me throw it up, throw him up in the Deadpool. So, all right, I need to remind him about that. So that actually gives you two for destroying PLAF steps. And you don't get anything for destroying whole units. I do. So that gives you two more victory points. So you're in the lead. Five, six. Any other attacks? Nope. All right. Over to me. I, I don't think I could do something kind of suicidal. You don't have anybody really vulnerable. Well, let's see. For movement, these guys are going to move. Break contact. And, well, we could do a little something-something, but you got a lot of artillery in right Yeah, I'm going to mark uh, missions on these guys, because I should do that. Because these that's, guys are complete. That's it. That, that's the end of my operations phase. I'm not launching any attacks. And... Um, that's kind of it. I mean, we don't have to walk through the final SR phase. It's the last, the last turn of okay. the game. So I'll show, I'll show everybody what was going on here. So let me unfix these. Guys. I kept fishing for that HQ. Yeah. So I'll expose everybody. So I was oh my thinking God. about doing an attack with these guys down on this, uh, that guy to the south of them. But you have a mm -hmm. lot of defensive artillery in range. That's not a good idea. Mm -hmm. And now, great deal of defensive artillery. Right. So let me now. Pull out number five and number two. And it was worthwhile bringing that air, that non-air mobile artillery up because they, they did stuff. They were not, you know, exploited to their maximum potential, that's for sure. But they, they, no. they were useful. Well, like I said, this is not a historical scenario. It's like set in the period, but it's an introduction. You know, I made it up, right? right. And, and the reason was to show all those different unit capability types. Mm -hmm. You know, the difference between, all right, so air mobile infantry can do land adjacent and all that stuff, but, like, the infantry can't. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure that we got, like, the armor in there and the armored cap. Yeah, you know, all these, you know, they show up in the campaign, but they're mm -hmm. not there at the beginning of the campaign, etc. And the units, were, like, they weren't all used together. So I wanted something that, like, showed a lot of functions. So you see where the ninth headquarters was up there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only other thing that was hidden were two more companies from the 272nd regiment which i didn't move south i in this uh, you know this scenario is very pro us balanced so mm -hmm. all right so let's look at victory you we take your total and you subtract 
mine. Uh-huh. So six minus four is plus two. And in this scenario, that equals an NLF Pyrrhic victory. Okay. The U.S. has to get um, a little bit higher um, to make it a draw, which is from three to six, mm-hmm. which is why we graded it this way. Like, it was your first time right. playing, and I, and I actually tried to play you, but you can see that the NLF are wholly disadvantaged. Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. I mean, they have the natural advantages provided them by the terrain and the game system with concealment and stuff like that. Uh, the forces but, they but, have are fairly decent, but, yes. you know, it's defensive. It's na- The U.S. player is on the attack, and it is amazingly good defensive terrain. Right. So those bunkers are already fixed. They're also conveniently located next to a road mm-hmm. where mechanized could get after them. Yeah. Yeah, you know that sort of thing, which which was you know it was it was it was built that way. So, yeah, you know it's funny as we tried to balance it and balance it. We're like, wow, the U.S. player just kicks ass in this one. So you know it, it's about doing so well. So in this one, it's like a pyrrhic victory. We damaged, we killed some Americans, you know, and so, so for the exchange in blood, it was kind of worth it. Mm-hmm. And this is like I said, it was made up. So it was, it was a pure. Let's just get it till it's balanced. Right. You know, there, there's nothing historical going on. And it here. plays. You know, we played the whole thing, including. You know, a little interview at the beginning of last uh, week. So we played, it's a three turns a short scenario, but we played the whole thing in less than four hours with a lot of explanation. Yeah. The, if we had just sat down and played it and I taught you, we probably could have played it, played this in an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. You know, it, because you saw it moves quickly. And, and like in, in all the scenarios like that, all that command phase stuff doesn't happen on the first turn. And really, it's funny, and I always forget when you get to the last turn, it's like, well, the final RSR phase doesn't really mean anything. On right. the last one. So, um, any questions about anything that we did, Gary, from you before I, I turn to the audience and then uh, we say good night? I don't think I have anything specific at this time. Okay. I will point out, I'll pull this over, um, that we have a pre order here on the Legion War Games site. Um, it's only been up for, what, two weeks now? Less than that? Um, nine days. Okay, so yeah, less than two weeks. It's a less. It's quicker than my uh, office chairs coming, coming. That's for sure. Um, Actually, it went up. It went up a week ago Tuesday. Yeah, we're doing pretty good for okay, yeah. a week ago Tuesday. Yeah. So if you have found this interesting, now's the time to get a pre-order in. And uh, this the system for pre-ordering through Legion is a little bit Byzantine, but um, the long <laughs> and short of it is that you pay when they ship, not or approximately when they ship, rather than when you place the pre-order. Right. Right, just like everybody else, and and the pre-order number to, for this thing to get released is two fifty, and like a, yeah, eight days, seventy four, not bad. Yeah, not you know? bad. So, um, any questions from anybody out there who's watching? Any more questions, um, Gordon? Did anybody ask anything else? Uh, Gordon answered uh, the question about what's the next topic for the series, which is Lamson. Yeah, yeah, it's. Um, or ways off. It's a very different operation. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Lamson 719 was Arvin invasion of Laos to try to destroy base areas. We're probably talking, like, this looks very small because we're playing an intro scenario, but if, you know, if we ever started the campaign, you'll see it. this gets to be two divisions worth in size. I, I, Lamson's about double that, you know, okay. in, in terms of size. Bigger map. Uh, probably 222 by 34. And then on top of it, there's just some pre-operational planning and um, strategic effects, strategic decisions that have to be made, as well as there's some political interference and some coordination problems from the Arvin and Lamson. So that's why I say the only way to do these operations and do them justice is ground up build. Because what I just described is very different than what we're seeing mm-hmm. in Operation Attleboro. Yeah, you know, so you know there there might um, I'm examining a, a chip pull mechanic for some of the political and strategic stuff. So I will also point yeah. out that the area that we played uh, across in this scenario is basically all jungle of various kinds, light jungle, dense jungle, jungled hills. Uh, but right. there was quite a bit of varied terrain on the map uh, with the rubber plantations and the rice paddies and the, and the mountain and there's some city uh, urban areas as well. So it's not all just jungle fighting per se. There's 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 
the map covers a fair amount of space. Yeah, as you know, in fact, as I back out and take a look, the campaign basically starts with the U.S. and the um, 196 Brigade around Tainan City, and the NLF basically north of Hex Row Seven. Uh, actually, further up, like around Hex Row Four, and moving into the moving into the theater, and the campaign just, you know, I no two look alike. You know, um, as you could tell with all the mobility and and, and the choice, it, they go very differently. The way reinforcements work in the campaign is through that intensity mechanism. Mm -hmm. So as things happen, intensity increases. So, like, historically, the 196 found itself in trouble and the U.S. reinforced with the 1st Infantry Division. And that occurred on November 6th. But that mm -hmm. doesn't happen in this game. It's, it's when the intensity reaches 20 you know then that triggers the reinforcements because it's a meeting engagement mm -hmm. you know somebody's conducting an offensive so it's it's a historical to have historical re historically dated reinforcements if that makes any sense in the campaign it's you know that's not historical that's not why they reinforced they didn't reinforce because it was november 6th mm -hmm. they reinforced because the 196 was in trouble and they felt that the forces in the air mcfee felt the forces in the area couldn't handle the problems mm -hmm. so you know that's you know and that's my attempt to not do history on rails you know like like yeah. historical dates and times it's about you know it's that's not an open free scenario that's just designing for the history and i and, yeah. you know and i think and i think there are games out there that try to shoehorn things into very specific scripting you know about dates and stuff when that's kind of a historical well in some cases that makes sense like it's you know it's d-day or you know you your sure. this unit is getting on the boat at this time and they're expected to land at this other time right uh, but haven't really like, makes sense like, here but for a game like we won't mention if you were playing three days at gettysburg right it would make no sense to like force people into making historical moves on the first day mm -hmm. right you know, right. You know it's, it's the first day at gettysburg so anyway thank you everyone for watching yeah thanks. um this was a blast uh, next uh, scheduled thing is Sunday with Pat, where Pat and I will revisit uh, P Ridge with Thunder and the Ozarks for uh, the. I think that'll be this will be the third session, I think, um, and then we'll have at least two nights, I think, next week, which we w I will put cards up um, for as those dates approach. Uh, we as haven't we ironed out the final details yet. We figure it out. Good night, everybody. Right. Thanks for watching. Everybody have a great night.